Hello everyone and welcome to the first game we'll be covering from round 6 of this year's FIDE Candidates Tournament. Uh, it is Vidit Gujarati versus Alireza Firuzja. Uh, here's a nice photo of the two of them. Uh, you can see Vidit uh, with the white pieces preparing to, to meditate before his first move and Alireza uh, as uh, colorful as always. Now, uh, get, going into this round, Vidit already has two losses. He lost to Pregnananda and the Nepo uh, and Alireza lost to uh, Hikaru Nakamura and also to Nepo. So Nepo uh, for the moment has defeated both of them and both of them will be looking forward to uh, uh, evening out the score in the second half of the candidates but for the moment they are facing each other now uh, for their previous encounters uh, there aren't that many classical games where two of them have faced each other uh, but uh, of the three games that they have played Vidit uh, won two and one game ended in a draw Vidit defeated him uh, in the 2020 Prague Chess Festival and also in uh, uh, this year's uh, Tata Steel Masters uh, edition so Alireza would uh, also definitely enjoy uh, evening out the score. So let's see what happens here. Uh, Vidit with the white pieces opens with pawn to e4. And uh, uh, although this game is uh, some 40 moves long, uh, the, the, the game uh, altering move happens already on move 13, as early as move 13. So okay, pawn to c5. Uh, we have the Sicilian defense by Alireza and knight to f3. Pawn to d6. Uh, d4 captures, captures and knight to f6. We have knight to c3 and now knight to c6 going for the classical variation not the not the knight for example of some of the other popular lines. Uh, bishop to c4 the Sozin attack against the the classical and now queen to b6. Uh, saying okay now you cannot develop your bishop I'm going to uh, go after your b2 pawn and also I'm putting additional pressure on the knight. So uh, of course the video just goes back knight to b3. There are some other moves you could play but they're not really Really, uh, that impressive like you could capture on c6 uh, you could go knight um, uh, knight d to b5 also is known is known but going for bishop to e3 is not the best here you're gonna give up the b2 pawn and now let's say knight d5 uh, knight captures bishop captures and queen c3 check and already it's not that uh, great for white you're gonna have to move the king and then black is just uh, black, black is just doing great so after queen b6, we have knight back to b3. Again, all very standard. We have pawn to e6 and bishop to f4. Uh, just putting pressure on that d6 pawn, uh, making use of the queen's weird uh, positioning on b6 and just queen back to d8. Uh, and okay, this game has been reached before. Uh, Terceha uh, ter can uh, somewhat played it against Boris Gelfand uh, and uh, Gelfand actually lost that game. It was in the 2021 uh, FIDE Grand Swiss, but in that game, bishop to e2 was played. As of course you are expecting a6 and b5 so bishop to e2 makes sense but we have queen to d2 by vidit and it is now as of move 9 that we have a completely new game so okay pawn to a6 uh, alereza uh, is considering uh, uh, b5 here as uh, it just makes sense the bishop is very strong on c4 plus vidit might also castle queen side so it uh, uh, it's very useful to have this option of b5 b4 right away Pawn to a3, we have pawn to b5 and bishop back to e2. And now just bishop to b7. And here already Alireza uh, has shown his cards. Uh, with, with bishop to e7 in castles, we would have a pretty standard uh, kingside, queenside setup where uh, it, it's just going to be a race. Who, who will attack who first? But by playing bishop to b7, Alireza doesn't even want to waste time on that. He just wants to get the rook to c8 and start uh, going after that uh, white queen side. And okay. Queenside castles, this also makes it problematic um, uh, to, uh, to, to defend the d6 pawn. And now Alireza brings the queen back to b6, putting pressure on the f2 pawn, saying, okay, now if you capture on d6, uh, I'm just going uh, to castle here and uh, my position is now great. Uh, you're going to have to play something like f4, e5, uh, but um, uh, all in all, yeah, this is uh, it's not going to be easy for this bishop here. Uh, so probably queen to f4 will have to be played, but even with queen to f4, uh, rook captures on d6 would just be very nice. For example, rook captures, you're going to play bishop captures, uh, uh, bishop captures, queen captures, and now queen captures on f2 going after the bishop. This would be okay for black. Uh, but after queen b6, pawn to g4. Uh, the real idea behind this setup is that you want to play g5, force the knight to d7 and then capture on d6. So rook to d8 uh, or, or castle queenside will not be an issue for you. Uh, so here you have to say, okay, 
uh, th that's not really happening. I have to play bishop d7, and then after g5, knight d7, bishop captures on d6, but the, the game continues. You can even castle queenside now. Uh, it's not going to be great for black, but, uh, you know, it, it can be played. Also, rook to d8 definitely can be considered here just to keep the pawn. Uh, but Alireza went for queen captures on f2. And this is move 13, and this is where he blundered the game. This is definitely a poison pawn, uh, but only if you spot the, the right idea behind it. So feel free to pause the video and try to find the best move for Vidit here uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, uh, congratulations on uh, trapping the Black Queen or almost trapping the Black Queen. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is pawn to e5. That's the that's the idea. Also, you could go for uh, a bishop to e3 right away. It's uh, it's definitely a possibility. Not a lot of squares for that um, black queen. For example, if you go queen to h4, then there's bishop to g5. And once you move the queen, rook h to g1, and uh, yeah, not uh, not the best. For example, h6 will be met with bishop to f1, and now uh, okay. Well, a queen can come to f3, but now bishop to g2, and that's pretty much it. No more squares for the for the black queen. Uh, but e5 is even more precise, and you'll see why. Uh, what can uh, what can Alireza do here? Uh, really, not a lot, because if you capture the pawn with the knight, then bishop captures on b5 check, uh, and off uh, comes the, the black queen. So that would just lose the queen in a single move. Uh, another thing you can do after e5 is play d captures on e5, but again, it's not the best. Bishop to e3, and now you just go after the, or, or queen h4, but we've already seen what happens there. Rook h to g1, queen captures on h2, rook h1, queen g2, and now rook d to g1 again traps Alireza's queen. So after e5, knight to d7 was played, and now just e captures on d6. So Vidit said uh, this is much much better than forcefully taking Alireza's queen as now Alireza is without uh, without a move basically uh, it's the same it's the same thing if you castle uh, you're gonna be hit with rook h to f1 and um, uh, again the queen will be will be trapped so here uh, queen back to b6 again and now bishop to e3 attacking the queen and queen back to d8 so it's remarkable how many times Alireza played queen b6 queen back to d8 in this game we have rook h to f1 uh, and now, okay, your queen is safe, but how do you develop? You don't really have time for for any uh, some maybe g6 moves, and then uh, you, you know you fianchetto the bishop, castle the king, then bishop to g5 comes, and uh, again not the best. Knight comes to e4, you gain total control over these squares, uh, and it's uh, it's a fairly fairly standard um, collapse. So here instead, knight c to e5. Uh, and just queen to d4 by Vidit. We have rook to c8, he finally gets his rook to c8, and now queen to a7. What's remarkable about this game is that uh, uh, Alireza actually grabbed the pawn on f5, but he's not even up uh, in, in material. Uh, now, okay, the bishop is hanging, bishop to c6, queen captures on a6, and now queen to a8. Now Alireza has to continue happily sacrificing in order to get at least something from this game. And now bishop to a7. Uh, it was also uh, possible to play knight capture some b5 here, but uh, bishop to a7 is better. I'm just going to show knight capture some b5 because it's way cooler. The rook captures on a6, and now knight to c7. Almost checkmating the black king, but not really. You have to give up the queen. And then after, let's say, rook a8, you just play bishop to a6, and that's it. Next move, c8, you 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 win more material and uh, enough to win the game. But okay, bishop to a7, even more precise by Vidit. And we even have a photo of this moment. Uh, there you have it. Uh, with it waiting for Alireza to, to make a move, even though there's no good move that he can make. And Vidit was really, really slow playing this game. He was really making sure that he plays everything properly because Alireza is well over an hour on the clock and uh, Vidit is down to 19 minutes. So uh, 19 moves still to be made. It is possible if Alireza manages to complicate things to that level that 19 minutes will just be not enough for Vidit. Uh, I do have to remind everyone, you only start getting increment uh, uh, as of move 41. Uh, so, okay, pawn to g6, uh, and now bishop captures on b5. Uh, we have bishop to h6 with check king to b1, bishop captures on b5, knight captures, and finally Alireza castles kingside, but now knight to c7, and the position is just dreadful. Uh, you could play rook to c8, but that rook will stay there for, for pretty much forever. That knight is not moving from 
uh, c7. Uh, so Alireza goes for knight captures on g4 instead. He gives up the exchange. Knight captures, queen captures, and now queen back to e2, trading the, the bishop for knight. Uh, Vidit, of course, uh, uh, welcomes every and all trades as he is up in material. So queen captures, queen captures, and bishop back to g7. Now, okay, uh, Vidit does have a rook for a bishop, but this bishop uh, is incredibly strong. And uh, what Vidit definitely doesn't want to do is make this game about attacking and about who's going to checkmate who first. What Vidit wants to do is, of course, uh, trade down and go into the end game. So, okay, queen to c4. Uh, he, he wants to go for queen to c7, and he will either have an incredibly active queen, or he will get um, the queens of the board. Queen b7, hoping for rook to c8, but of course not happening. Queen to c7, queen to b5, and rook to, uh, rook to f4. Uh, we have queen to e2, putting pressure on the rook on d1, rook to d2, attacking the queen, and now queen to e5, seemingly attacking the rook and threatening checkmate, but it can all easily be averted, uh, rook f to d4. We have knight to f6, uh, but now just queen to c5. Again, pushing for a queen trade. Of course, Alireza cannot accept this, knight to d5, uh, and here, king to a2. Vidit wants to play c3, but he doesn't want to worry about any checks, so uh, definitely makes sense. And Vidit is already down to five minutes on the clock. Uh, five more moves are needed to, to reach time control. Queen to f6. Pawn to c3, and now bishop to h6. Alireza would have uh, resigned this long ago uh, if it weren't for Vidit's time trouble, uh, but Vidit continues playing in, uh, well, j just the strongest moves. Rook captures on d5. You don't have to sacrifice the exchange here, but uh, it, it just makes sense. Pawn captures. Rook captures on d5, now preparing to advance the passed pawn. Uh, bishop to f4, and now pawn to d7. Rook to d8, blocking the passed pawn, but now just knight to d4. And he was in this position on move 40, upon reaching time control that Alireza Firuja resigned the game, uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, so really, really uh, uh, f fantastic game by Vidit. He took that uh, one mistake that Alireza made. Uh, and, uh, you know, made it into a full point for him. And here you resign because, well, you're just down too much material, but also what do you play? The knight is coming to c6. Once the knight comes to c6, the game is over. The rook is attacked. Uh, you're going to have to move the rook. You're going to have to give it up. And if you pin the knight, uh, also doesn't matter. Just rook e5 attacks the bishop and threatens rook to e8 check. And if you capture, also just rook to e8 check. And that's pretty much it. King, G, uh, King g7 and queen to f8 will be checkmate. Uh, so yeah, uh, very nicely done by Vidit, uh, uh, stopping the bleed somewhat, as I said, uh, going into this round, both of them uh, were on two losses, and now Vidit uh, uh, well, definitely welcomes a second win, and we're also going to show one more game at least from this round, and then we are going to discuss the standings, not to spoil the results for anyone if you guys were not following the action yesterday. And yeah, when Alireza played that uh, queen captures on b2 move, on uh, move uh, 14, uh, you know, if, if you get a chance, check out the live live uh, coverage uh, or the live footage from the live coverage. Uh, it was almost as if uh, Vidit was shaking. He was he was so focused on this uh, position because he, he knew right away that Alireza has blundered. He just uh, had to calculate everything perfectly, and he did. He, he could have gone for the queen, but no, e5. Uh, what a classy, classy move by Vidit. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, uh, I would like to thank uh, Thomas Keller, William Smith, Thomas Zighetti, uh, Thomas Dernoga, uh, and uh, MPU Consulting for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions, but mostly covering the FIDE Candidates Tournament uh, until it finishes. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.